all are good people. Welcome to the second episode of In All Honesty. I feel like I need to explain why this episode is coming in late because if I committed to consistency and I didn't even do it the second episode, then I should be held accountable. So here's the thing. Um, this second episode was supposed to be recorded with my friend Irene. Um, some of you know her. Of course, you meet her um, in, other, in another episode. But that week just came with a lot of things and where we had to adult so much and the week just flew by. After that, I had a work seminar that I went to for a whole week and it was activities throughout the day and it was just tiresome. By the time I was getting back, I'm not a social person, so uh, my social energy had been well spent out. So I just took Saturday to rest. And here I am on Sunday recording this because I felt like I just need to be consistent or else I'm going to fall off the wagon. Otherwise, I am so happy and I am elated that you liked my first um, episode, which was on insecurities. A lot of people just reached out and were like, even I am going through the same thing. I have felt like that before. Now, this was not only empowering for you. It was just as empowering for me because when I put out that episode, I was so vulnerable and I was just like, how am I going to face the world with people knowing all these things about me? People could literally take this up and take advantage of you. But you people are amazing. You have beautiful hearts. Your feedback was amazing. And I am so glad, extremely glad that you're enjoying the podcast. You are relating that it is helping. I think that's where I wanted to go with this. And as you know, I am your beautiful girl, Olive Rawo. So I forgot to mention my fabulous name. It is, uh, Olive Rawo is my fabulous name. <laughs> so let's get down to what we are supposed to be talking about in this episode, which is sex appeal. So first of all, you need to understand that I don't have a content calendar yet because first I am winging this and because of that I get inspiration from random things I interact with on the internet at the moment so today we're going to be talking about sex appeal now you also need to note that um, I haven't done research on this topic what I'm going to talk about is basically from observation that I have been able to see through my life interacting with people. And this observation is going to be biased because I am a heterosexual female and therefore that's the only perspective I hold. So if you're wondering what about the male perspective, what about um, if I am I'm part of the LGBTQI community, how does that work with sex appeal? I honestly do not know. So please if you have any of this information or you have any sort of feedback that you think you can give me, I'd be happy. Hit my comments, hit my DM. Let me know how it works on that other side because I only have this one perspective. So the post that I found on Facebook that ignited my idea of talking about sex appeal was a post done by uh, someone called Nina Belladon Simone. So the post literally says, um, I quote, sex appeal is literally an aura. It's a consistent natural vibe one possesses. You can be good looking, even have a nice body with zero sex appeal. I'm just going to go through that again so that you just take it all in. Sex appeal is literally an aura. It is a consistent natural vibe one possesses. You can be good looking, even have a nice body with zero sex appeal. Okay, and I have never seen a truer statement because a lot of us feel like if we didn't have sex appeal, then we are not attractive. No, that's not the thing. Sex appeal is just a whole thing, and we're going to get into it in a little bit. I went on Google and searched what the meaning could be, and Google just gave me the quality of being attractive in a sexual way. Wow, Google, thanks. That helps a lot. <laughs> so it's just the quality of being attractive in a sexual way. And if you look on the internet, a lot of people will explain um, sexual, what is it called? Sex appeal as being used in adver advertising very much. So it's always a girl who's good looking or thighs or a man who's topless and with a six pack. But that's, I feel like that's not it because, huh, well, <laughs> 
So let's just get into what I have observed. So I have met people with extremely high sex appeal all through my life. I have zero sex appeal. And this is not to say that I am not attractive. So why, if you don't have, if you have zero sex appeal, please, you're not ugly. Listen to this podcast and understand why. So the people that I have met who have very high sex appeal, um, they have been my friends. And so this is why I have been able to observe this. All these people I have met, let's say, um, I know three personally, and there is nothing, I tell you, nothing common amongst all of them physically. The first girl I met with very high sex appeal was a girl who never cared about how she looked. She looked homeless all the damn time, never made her hair. She was just, she didn't care. And she was rude as freaking hell. I, (laughs) it's those people who are like, um, it's those people who fuck the patriarchy. And I think that's how we got to be friends. (laughs) But this girl never cared about how she looked. Like I know I look, I know I don't put effort into how I look, but her, she was a whole new level. And she used to tell me, Olive, so I don't need to put extra oils on my body. So she was ashy. <laughs> but I was just like, you know what, girl? If you shower and you're clean, we're good. I she that you do you. So this girl was the kind of person who never dresses up at all. She never gave a, a sixth sense or she never gave a second thought about how she looked when she was leaving the house. And this is a girl who she would sit like this and men would just flock. Can, need I remind you that she is rude as freaking hell. So we were at work and she was known to be the rude girl, but still her desk had men giving her money and just telling her, um, can I see you later on after work? So it was crazy. The second person I met who had very high sex appeal looked a lot like me, a lot like me. She never dressed up. She had a regular body. She was regular looking. So long as she was clean, she was fine. And I was just like, this is very different from the first girl I know. How then do they have this sort of natural, um, how then do they have this sort of sex appeal? And then the third person I met is the person who we all believe has that sort of sex appeal where they're beautiful. They are just magnificent. It's their body. It's their face. They're naturally beautiful. They put a lot of effort into what they wear. They buy a lot of shoes, buy a lot of clothes. They're always making their hair. They smell nice. They invest in scents. So, this third person that I met is the person we'd put in a bubble of having sex appeal because they had all the right boxes ticked, okay? But if you compare her to the other two people who I know who have very high sex appeal, it just didn't make sense. I was just like, what is common amongst all these three people? Now, what you need to understand is that I wasn't feeling jealous at this point. I am not. I wasn't feeling in any type of way towards them. The feeling that I remember I might have felt at a particular point is the feeling of not being enough. So you can imagine if you're hanging out with these people and men are flocking them and you're just there and you're thinking, uh, what, what, don't I look good? And sometimes if a man approaches you, you're just waiting for them to ask for details about your friend. That's how bad it was. So you're just feeling like I'm not enough. So if you're a person with zero sex appeal or not so high sex appeal, here I I am to tell you that it's not that you are not attractive. You're just, you just don't have it in you. Okay. It's just not you. Okay. There's nothing wrong with you. You are beautiful. And this is me telling you, and I am not a liar. Okay. So let's get to, um, some of the similarities that I found that, now made sense (laughs) as to why these people had high sex appeal. So this is the aura that I think Nina Belladonna is talking about. These three people were very sexually liberated. So what I noted amongst them is that they could have multiple sex partners. And that is something 
common amongst all of them. So they're the kind of people who'd leave the club with someone and go home with someone and have sex and come back the next morning. So they were super liberated about sex. Sex is something you could not, um, you could not shame them about. Sex was always on the table. I mean, if she's going to go out with someone, she doesn't like him per se, but sex has to be on the table. And most of the time they were very open to just the idea of having sex. Um, but when they were dating, that's, <clears throat> sorry, that's also something that I noted when they were dating, when now they were committed to one person, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be with anyone else. But if they were just open and were not having sex with any particular, and were not dating someone particular, then they were just open to the idea of sex. Now, what, uh, what this aura means is that when I meet you for the first time, how the hell do I even know that you're sexually liberated? You know, right? That's not something you can tell when you see someone for the first time. So that's why Nina Belladonna is referring to it as an aura. You just have it. There's nothing you can do about it, okay? So you're just the kind of person who's very sexually liberated. And these are the people who describe sex to you and they were like, I, I have to be pleased. All these multiple partners that they have, have to please them. So they are, they have hacked it when it comes to the game of sex. Okay. You understand that? Do you have that? So if you don't, probably that's where we're starting to talk about <laughs> your sex appeal not being that high. Okay. The second thing I realized is that these people enjoy sex. They really, really love sex. Because there are times I told them, I haven't had sex for a year. And they're just like, what the hell do you mean? What on earth? There are times, there are times um, this girl would have a headache. And she'd come to the office and she'd be just like, Olive, I need to get laid. And I'm thinking, are you telling me you're having a headache from lack of sex for two weeks? And she's just like, yes. Yes, I need to get laid so that this headache can go away. Maramoja is not the medicine right now. <laughs> so that is something that I also noticed um, was common amongst the three people that I met. They love having sex. They enjoy the idea of having sex. They can't go for a long time without having sex. And a long time could vary. There are people who it could be three days. There are people who it could be two weeks. There are people who it could be one month. It just depends. But they can't go for a long time without sex. Um, sex for them has to be often. And when we're talking about, uh, <laughs> when you're talking about the timelines for having sex, I want you to understand that people who have zero sex appeal, are people who are okay with not having sex up to a year. Guys, we know ourselves. Eh? <laughs> you could go for months. You could go for years without having sex. And it's not that you've taken a chastity vow. You just don't feel like having sex, honestly. Or you just don't feel... In the space that I am currently, I just don't feel like having sex with someone that I am not intimately involved with. I feel like if I want to have the next time I want to have sex, it has to be with someone I'm dating. I just feel like I, I, I don't want to wake up in someone's house or wake up with someone in my house and I have to figure out the whole idea of breakfast and then how do I get to my place? I think just that that morning scene is a bit tiresome for me. And so it has to be someone I'm dating so that I, when I wake up, I'm comfortable. I can hang around the house and I can make breakfast and just chill because this is my person. So, um, for, I think people with high sex appeal, the minute they stop dating, then they just start having sex with whoever. Okay. And so that is something that I noticed that was also common with them. So with that on the table, do you understand <laughs> where the aura of sex appeal comes from because it's just something people have it's nothing to do with the way they look it's nothing to do with how their body is shaped it's nothing to do with your level of attractiveness it's basically just an aura you carry around and i am guessing um it's risky to say this but i would sort of tie it to a personality i am yet to meet an introvert with high sex appeal. I am yet to meet one. <laughs> because if you see all these people with very high sex appeal, they are also very outgoing. They're always meeting people. They're always in public places. And let me tell you how sex appeal works. This aura is horrible. It's like, it's like hip, hypnotism. 
it's like people have been hypnotized. Do you know I could be walking on the road with my friend and someone will see her and turn the car and come back just to ask for her number and meet her later on. It's weird. It's great. Like on the road, a, a stranger. This is someone you have never seen, never met before. And it happens. So, yeah. Basically, that is my observation with sex appeal. It has nothing to do with how attractive you are. So just understand that I sort of tie it to personality. So right now, I'm able to note people with, I'm able to note people with high sex appeal. Um, I got to a point where I had I, I, I had to understand that. I have zero sex appeal, Olive. I have, Olive, you just, you just can't. First of all, sex is tiresome for you. Um, if it's not, <laughs> I don't know. I can't get into the details of it, but sex is not this big thing in my life. And therefore, yeah, you, you can't possibly be carrying it around. If you're the kind of person, homebody, who just likes like chilling in the house, you're an introverted person, I highly doubt you'd have a high sex appeal. I really doubt. But that's all I got for this episode. If you have any more information, please let me know. Just hit up me on my comments or even my DM. I was really happy about you guys talking about um, your insecurities earlier on. And let's talk about this sex appeal thing, okay? I just need to tell people with zero sex appeal, you are not um, ugly. You are attractive. You are very beautiful. You just attract in other sort of ways because I realized that. Let me just share mine so that you feel if you relate. I rarely attract people at first sight. I would, I, I can't be in a place and someone comes up to me and says, oh, you look, never. That has, that rarely ever happens. But the thing is, once these people get to know me, it's almost difficult for them to live their lives without me because now they are attached to a certain personality that just, <laughs> that's addictive, man. If you hang around me, it's addictive, okay? And so there is something you have that is not necessarily sex appeal. And sometimes, and you could also just be literally attractive. You are just super beautiful, okay? But it's, sex appeal has refused. Eh? It's an aura. Can we agree on that? It's just um, the quality of being attractive in a sexual way. So I'm sure the question that's going to come up is, can you build um, sexual attraction? Um, can you build sex appeal? I don't know. I don't think so because I am scared to actually tell you that you can because I feel like that will include changing who you are as a personality because in my observation i have literally attached it to personalities extroverted introverted um so those are things you might want to look at if you if you think sex appeal is that important to you is it really is it okay but if it can be trained you let me know i am open to any information that may come my way but right now i just want to tell you that this is all from observation my opinion nothing is fact um i am open to all the information that's going to come from anywhere and everywhere and as you know we have come to the end of our second episode in all honesty i love you and i can't wait for our third episode see you around lovely people <laughs>